So what is going on dammers, my name is Mehul and welcome to your 31st Angular 6 tutorial in which we're gonna take a look at what the heck actually Redux is. So let's get started. So um, first things first, what is actually Redux? So if you are someone who has never seen Redux, um, or maybe you have heard about Redux, you're like, hmm, I have seen Redux uh, working with React or something, but um, it's used to work with some sort of data. I don't know what exactly it is. So yeah, what it is. Well, Redux is, if you're seeing it for the first time, you can think of it as a person who is in charge of managing the data flow in your application so redux simplifies governs manages how your state of your application how the data in your application is flowing from one view to another or actually how views are anyway requesting the data from the redux store so how is data stored without redux well you know that typescript in our TypeScript classes, we store the data like, um, here's our code. You can see that right here, if we take a look inside our app component, you can see that we are storing the data right here and then we write the logic here, somewhere here, right? So um, that is how basically TypeScript stores, uh, you store the data without Redux. So this is the typical standard way of storing the data then why do we need redux in the first place well you don't if you are if you can work without redux and without beating your head to the wall you probably don't need redux redux if you add redux to simple applications would only complicate them and this is a tried and true thing so you do not need Redux as long as you do not feel to use something which simplifies your data flow. All right, Redux usage. Now let's just answer first, why would you need Redux in such an application? If you have been following this web series all along, then you know that we had developed a login and registration app. And what I missed in that application is a header. Now, um, let's just say we had a header in that application which displayed links like um, welcome user, whatever the name is, then sign up, sign in, log out, and all that buttons. Let's just say inside content, I had a log out button here as well. Now, when I click on this log out button, I want that my header should display um, welcome guest or you know should remove pretty much remove that message how do i convey that information from my content component to header component now i could have done that if my content was a child of header i could have just passed down um, a method which i could have called from this content to header but header is not the parent of content neither is content associated with header in any way any near way obviously there's a distant relationship between them you can just go to its parent and then um, go to header but that, that's not really the practical way to achieve that right so in this case what we can do is actually create a redux store so redux store would sit somewhere let's just try to draw it a redux store would sit somewhere right here right and what it would do is that when you click on this logout button here it would contact this redux store to update the particular state and then the header can get that information from the same redux store and update its component so you can see that instead of going right like this which might <coughs> in very big applications create a lot of confusion and hard to debug code we are going through a store this is the store the redux store right 
So similarly, if inside my menu, I'm displaying something for something different for logged in users and something else for logged out users, what I can do is once I click on, let's just say logout, logout button here now, I can update this store here. The store, this is the store, same store through which content fetches its details. So it gets updated as well and the menu gets updated as well. So you can see that there's a consistency, there's a flow of data when you use Redux. So when to use Redux? I already answered that question in the previous slide only. So when one component, when needs to access data of another component, that might be the use case of Redux. When you need to update the component's data, that might also be the use case of Redux. And when you want to keep data in sync, and if you carefully read all these three points, you will notice that these points are actually same. They are not different from one another. So yeah, that is basically what, why, when, and how of Redux. And uh, that's all for this video. And in the next video, we'll see how to actually implement Redux with Angular 6. So I'll see you then in the next video. And one more thing, if you like this video, then don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to receive instant notifications.